So now we got to go across the river and we're going to talk to much to Anthony's delight about the New York <laughs> Islanders. Now, considering they have much less questions to answer, this should actually go a little bit faster. But before we even start this, tomorrow afternoon, we are touring UBS Arena. See a video on that coming soon where you're going to see us highlighting what hopefully will be a good experience for not just Anthony, but for us to go see the Rangers when hopefully they dominate the Islanders over there as well. But although it hasn't been like that at the Barclays Center, thank God the Barclays Center is no more. <laughs> so Anthony, starting off, what do you like most about this team? Um, I mean, there's I like a lot about it, but I guess I'll just Barry Trotz and how, you know, every year he has this team playing the same style of hockey. Um, you know, he, he has them, come prepared from from day one um like so you all know what you're going to get from they all i mean to a certain extent obviously barzell's line plays different than the fourth line but they all play the same style within that system uh they all they all know what their jobs are um well structured you know it starts from lou at the top uh you know all the way down to barry and the players um you know as dan rosen said um and you can talk about this a little bit when you start to talk about what you don't like when he was with us last week he's like gotta be honest he's like i don't i don't see much not to like about this team and um i i love that about them they're very deep um and you know along with a couple other teams in the league they're up there with a lot of people with you know competing for a cup this year so but barry trotz uh i, I love i love what he's done for this team Silk. Um, a, a lot of what Anthony said, it, it, it just, there's a lot of structure and depth and Lou Lamorello and Barry Trotz are the perfect combination for this team for that very reason. Lou Lamorello runs his teams like George Steinbrenner ran the Yankees there. There's no, there's no names on the back. You check your ego at the door, you get the F out. Um, you have a, a great coach who's, probably going to be regarded as one of the 10 best coaches ever when it's all said and done. A guy that comes in and absolutely demands the absolute best every night from his players, every shift, every battle, every detail is covered. He dots the T E dots, the I's crosses the T's. He demands the absolute best from his players. Uh, they're a deep team. They have a great system. Even when the goaltenders are off, the system can help compensate for the goaltenders being off. If one of the defenders is off, the system will compensate for that too. Uh, they, they play hard every night. They're physical. They're in your face. They're an absolute pain in the ass to play against. So that, that's what I like about the Islanders. And I, I think, like I said, they're coming out on top in this division. The, and, and well, you're supposed to save your prediction for the end, but thank I you. Know. <laughs> I, uh, I, I got to go with uh, that. This is one of the most difficult teams in the NHL to play against. And that's what I'm hoping the New York Rangers will also follow suit with the, um, the Islanders just are consistent day in and day out. And you, you they aren't like a box of chocolates. You know exactly what you're going to get <laughs> and you're going to yeah. get a whole lot of pain every time you go in there. And it's, they are going to win the center matchup every single night. I've said that about them since last March. And it's there aren't many teams they'll lose the center matchup to. I don't even know if – I don't know if there is a team that they lose the center matchup to. Well, that's what Dan Rosen said, but he said, yeah, the Oilers have McDavid and Dreisaitl, but who's their three and four? Exactly. And that's where the thing is. That. Your your drop off from one to four is is a lot. Yeah, that's a little bit more of an. I don't want to use the word even playing because Barzell is a great player, but Brock Nelson. I mean, come on. So Anthony, how do you assess the goaltenders? Kind of talked about this uh, a little bit in our group chat the other day when ESPN ranked their tandems and they had the Islanders at number one. Um, and whether you have them at one, two, three, it doesn't matter. The point remains is they have their goaltending situation is really good. Um, you have Varlamov, who's who's been, even though I've you know I've chirped him a lot during the playoffs, he's had the propensity to let up some soft goals. But at the end of the day, his statistics are at the top of the league. Um, you know he's 
he's steady um, and he's been getting the job done. And then you add Ilya Sorokin to the mix, who, uh, who I thought, you know, for, for not having a, a real training camp last year and no preseason games, um, you know, he adapted really well to the NHL. And as he got more comfortable, you saw how good he was against Pittsburgh. And I think the expectations for him this year are even higher. So regardless of which one's in goal, Varlamov, Sorokin, um, they're, they're as steady as they come. And that's one of their strengths. So they couldn't be in a better spot there. I know we'll, we'll talk about, you know, the Varlamov injury a little, maybe a little later when we talk about some other things. But uh, right now, when, when they're both healthy as a number one, two duo, you can't really ask for anything better. Talk. Yeah, they're definitely one of the best tandems in the league. No doubt about that. Uh, the system absolutely helps them too, which is a boost to them. So when you have a really good tandem and you have a great system in front of them with the way that that team plays, on most nights you're going to get quality goaltending. So you don't really have to worry about anything. And like you guys were talking about before, you know what you're going to get from the Islanders. You know what you're going to get from these two goaltenders. You're going to get solid play. And do they need to be Vezina caliber goal, goalies to win? No, they don't. They don't have to be. And that's fine. And as an Islander fan, you should actually be happy about that because they could have an off night and you're still probably going to win more times than not because the system helps. And that's the great part about having a great coach. So the goaltending, I, I'm not worried about it if I'm an Islander fan. That That's probably the last of my worries if I'm an Islander fan. I think the goaltending is set up to succeed very well, especially this year with the Olympics coming up. Rolamov is going to the Olympics. So Sturkin and Sorokin are not going to the Olympics. So it might be on Sorokin to carry the, the load the first two months. Uh, I've become a believer in Ilya Sorokin. Because of that win versus the Pittsburgh Penguins, I don't think they get past Pittsburgh Penguins without Ilya Sorokin. So uh, he's starting to fill the bill that Islander fans were telling me about for so long and how great this guy was. Can't wait to see the matchup for him versus Sorokin for a lot of years. Yeah. yeah. Shannon, by the way, thank you. And also credit to Shannon who helped me write, uh, bring on the hockey season. The singing, different story. <laughs> that might not have been the best. It's not really my key. I'm don't don't ever American. try out for American Idol. I I, no, I never will. Funny part <laughs> is, I'm again I'm more of a baritone, so it's a little bit out of my key. All right, <laughs> does this team have the depth? I'll start this one for you, Anthony. Yes, they have the depth. Their forward group is one of the deepest in the league, and uh, they they're probably not going to dress Leo Komarov half the season. He was playing on their top line. That's what I'll I'll be so bold to say because they have depth everywhere. My only question on their depth is their defense. And I'll get to that more later. Going to you, Anthony. Yeah, depth one through 12. Um, they're great. I mean, you, you have a situation where uh, Richard Ponick, um, you know, barring an injury to Matt Martin to start the year, is not even going to – he's going to be the 13th forward. And, you know, on – I would say, decent, you know, 10 to 12 teams or so, Richard Ponick's probably, a you know, everyday fourth-line player. So – they got they got depth there. Um, they got guys that could step in. Um, it's not something I'm really concerned about. Yeah, you mentioned the D. Uh, that that is true. But overall, their their forward depth, um, they're they're good. I mean, it's not, they're, 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 I mean, uh, yeah, they they got the depth. Well, that sums that one up. Look, <laughs> the only question I literally have regarding depth for them is. Who's the other? Who's the other top four defenseman outside of Pellick, Pollock, and Mayfield? That's it. That's the only question I have. I I think that should that should speak volumes about what my answer is. Okay, so brings us to the next point. What is the player that you're keying on, Anthony, for this Islander team? Oliver Wallstrom. Um, you know, we saw what he did last year: the twelve goals in the forty-four games, which is pretty good. Um, we know the shot that he could bring. Um, you know, he's a useful tool in the power play there. Uh, he had a really, you know, after, you know, not really doing the best after he decided to go to Boston College and then turn pro. You know, he was kind of up and down. But last year, he kind of really started to develop into the player, what everyone thought he could be. 
Um, and now it's his, now it's, this is his chance to really take the ball and run with it. You know, yeah. Uh, Trotz already said he's going to start with uh Palmieri on the top line with, with Lee and, and Barzell, but that's not an issue. He's going to play with Pajot, who's a very, very, a very solid third line center and Parise. He's going to get power play time. Um, and his shot is just really good. So I think he's going to get every opportunity to succeed. And if he can, you know, score 20, you know, 20, 22 goals, that I mean, for the Islanders, that that would be great, and he has the potential to do so. So I'm um, I'm curious to see what type of year he has. Phil, well, since my answer was just taken, uh, I'm gonna <laughs> go with Scott Mayfield. <laughs> I want to see how Scott Mayfield can carry that second pairing without someone like Nick Letty with him. Because as much as I I would harp on Nick Letty over the years, Nick Letty was still a, a, a decent top four defenseman. I will say. So I want to see how Scott Mayfield carries that pairing because he's going to be relied upon doing so. And I also want to see who plays with him. So Scott Mayfield's production, the way he plays and what he gives you on a nightly basis is going to be very important to the New York Islanders' success. Since my answer was taken also by (laughs) Anthony, I'm going to go with uh, Zach Parise because where is he going to fit on this team? We know there's a role for Zach Parise on this team. We know it's not on the second line because that's where you got the B line, which still sounds like a terrible nickname, but it's very obvious. That's the one that's got to be. And uh, so is he going to slot in on that top line with Barzell and can he produce at a top line level, or is he going to slide in more on the third line and produce like maybe 15 goals, chip that in play well defensively. He, he could be a real difference maker he's got something left. I just don't know what and how much. So we're going to see about that. So what player, Anthony, could be most critical to the team? Uh, I mean, this is because they all play so well as a unit. I mean, I would, I guess I would have to go ahead and say um, Matt Barzell. I mean, Matt Barzell, listen, he's a guy that has, has elite skating ability, his edge work. Um, he's a zone entry monster, um, his stick handling ability. And I think we could all agree if he was on any other team, he would produce more points. But, you know, he's tried to become a more defensive player and really buy into Trotz's system. And there have been a lot of growing pains with him. Trotz isn't afraid to staple his ass to the bench if he makes a mistake. Uh, and he's talked about how he's matured over the years. Um, but, you know, if this is a guy that plays to the to top ends of his ability – um, you know, he, he really can make the Islanders that much more of a dangerous team. And, you know, Lee being back, that big body in front of the net, and also Palmieri's not afraid to go to the net too, um, create some space for him. And Palmieri could shoot the puck pretty well. And then you have Lee causing havoc in front uh, that has the makings of what could be a really productive line. So um, if Barzell's buzzing more, more often than not, I mean, that's going to make the Islanders a much more dangerous team. I do not have a specific player. See, yeah. I have I, I have an opening that hasn't been filled yet, really, that we don't know what we're going to get the end. Talk for us for a second. And he froze. Can you get it a second? <laughs> Hopefully he gets there. <laughs> <laughs> all right i was i was hoping oh wait folks folks on frozen okay yeah I, I i guess the the wi-fi must have gotten crappy here you guys can hear me right yeah no, i can hear you yeah. don't worry yeah. all right okay so what were you thinking the uh, I, it's it's the top four spot that hasn't been filled yet it depends on what player goes there and what that defender gives them because right now we really we really don't have an inside track as to who that is, right? Is it Gustafson? Well, well so right now, uh, Chara has been stapled to Dobson, so they're definitely going to be a pair to start this season. So that the only thing left in Fluxville is who plays at Mayfield on the left side. Right now, um, it's either going to be Eric Gustafson um, or I guess, I guess Robin Salo. I mean, Andy Green hasn't even played a preseason game yet, which – I think to me he might actually be the seventh guy, which I'm I'm fine with. But um, if I'm a betting man, I'm saying Eric Gustafson. And like we talked about before, 
I think no one has issues with his offensive game. I mean, he, he has four assists so far in like the three games he's played. It's just how he's going to be defensively. But to answer your question, it seems like Chara Dobson, Gustafson, Mayfield. Yeah. yeah Gustafson and- doesn't exactly inspire many people. Yeah, I, I, like I said, I, I don't really have a lot of confidence in him in his own zone and even strength. Um, as for the power play, he looks great on the power play at times. And you, like you said, he has points so far in the preseason. But it's really what he gives you in his own zone away from the puck at even strength. And, and that, to me, is going to be the most important thing because if he's an anchor on that pairing and he drags Mayfield down – then that prohibits one of your better defense, one of your three best defenders defensively, and it takes a lot away from him. So that could be an issue. So I'm I'm going to say, I guess I'll say Gustafson at this point if that's going to be the case. I was hoping you were going to take one of my two guys that I had so I could figure it out. It's Adam <laughs> Pellick. Adam Pellick gets injured. This this team isn't is is in. Uh, I think they're in a lot of trouble if Adam Pellick gets injured. Yeah. He is that good defensively. And it, if my backup answer was going to be Pajot because he's the matchup center that they love to use. He's their number. The Islands have three matchup centers when you really <laughs> think about it because they'll roll out. I'm going to say in order, probably Pajot, Brock, and then Sezikis. Gee, that's a terrible lineup to throw as your matchups. But um, that's a big advantage. It, yeah, yeah, a little bit, you think? It's, a big uh, it's sort of like when the Rangers had had uh, McDonough and Girardi, then it was Stahl and Strawman, and then it was Kevin Klein, and who who gives a crap what the last one is? John they Moore. were able to match up consistently. That's why the teams in the mid-2010s uh, were good. Back to the Islanders again. Pellick went down. Uh, we'll get to that in a second, James. Yeah. So, uh, Pellick went down in 2020 and the Islanders weren't that good. Pellick came back. They went to the conference finals. So I'm going to stick with, with Adam Pellick because <laughs> that you can't go wrong with that. That's a yeah, good, yeah. That, that, yeah. That's, a good, that's a great answer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel like it's family feud. Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> Number one out of Pellick. Survey says. <laughs> Survey says. All right, Anthony, we got to know what do you like least about this team? Oh, the, the left side defense. I mean, you know, and again, it's not a, like Dan Rosen said. There's not, there's real no mer- glaring, glaring issue. You know, every good team has has some weaknesses, and this is the one on the Islanders. The good thing though is because of the system that they play, um, they they don't, you know, they don't need like a absolute star on the second and third pairing on defense. Yeah, it would help, but their system helps ease the blow a little bit, but still I definitely go there. Um, Eric Gustafson, I have no doubts in his ability to score score. I mean, he's not going to do six points again, but if he makes a team and, you know, cause he's on a PTO mind you. So if he signs a contract, I could see him being a 35 point guy with the right um, power play time. Uh, and then you have Char on the left side. Who's looked good in camp. We all know that he keeps in really great physical shape for a guy his age, but you don't, it's tough to have a 44 year old, it, no, I might make Brady's. I get his age confused with Brady. He's 40, right? 42. 42. Okay. So to have no, uh, Char, I think he's older than that, right? I think he's only 42 because if I recall correctly, yeah, I think, if you if you made him 43, he'd be the rotting corpse that's in the yeah. upper left. I mean, the points oh, stand God. though. They're, they're left, but so to have a guy his age on the left side and then a guy like Eric Gustafson who's not the best in his own zone. Char and then, is 44. He is okay. Was he right. is forty four. He's older than right. me. I doubted he myself. Um, yeah, he will be so, forty five in March. Yeah. So to have to, to have that, um, that it's a little a little disconcerting. But I mean that that's really that's really the thing I like least about them. Other than that, I, I think they're everywhere else. They're good. Okay, Phil. I'm gonna say the lack of a top flight goal scorer which has really been the Islanders' big problem for the last however many years. My Uncle Chris is a diehard Islander fan, and he's been calling for them to get a legitimate top-line sniper since John Tavares was drafted. 
So, uh, yeah, that that's my biggest thing. And I know that won't be a problem during the regular season because they're extremely deep at forward and they play a hardworking game. And I know Barry Trotz stifles it a bit, but they lack a top flight goal scorer. And that's really part of what they're going to need to get them over the hump past Tampa. So to me, it's it's a it's a top flight sniper. Since you, you gave me, since you went with that one, I'm going to go with, well, this is going to be my answer anyway. It's a power play. Their, their power play is still middle of the pack to mediocre at best. And even when it looks good, it still kind of doesn't. So if the Islanders, though, end up moving themselves into a top 10 power play, sky is the limit. Like, then they're dangerous. Then you got this hard-checking team that, you're afraid to take a penalty against because that's one reason why, like if you get a good power play teams, not only are you afraid it's going to be in the back of the net from, because they're going on the power play, you're afraid to do something to avoid a penalty, which opens up some ice and then they end up putting in the back of the net anyway. So that's if that's why if the Islanders can find a way at the trade deadline, answering that question that was just on the screen below, they find a way to get Tarasenko. Ooh, that team gets really healthy, yeah. scary. Yeah. Then, then I might be paying up uh, for my Stanley Cup bet that I made years ago with my friend John from All Things Islanders, whom we're touring the the stadium with. Okay, Anthony, here you go. This is your moment to shine. Everything breaks right. How far will they go? How far can last, they go? The last two years, conference finals. Last year, game seven, lose one nothing on a shorthanded goal. Um, you know, if everything breaks right, they could they can lift the cup over their heads. You know, Anders Lee can get the cup from Bettman and then hoist it. That's it. Um, it's just a matter of, one, staying healthy, which is the case for all teams, um, and playing that brand of Isler hockey, you know, consistently as they've done in the last two years. Uh, you know, if you look at their, their, you know, their forward groups, one through 12, I mean, well, I should say one through nine, cause not the fourth line, but they have so many guys like Phil mentioned, they don't have that elite sniper, but their guys in their top nine, with the exception of Josh Bailey, who usually like around 11 goals, all of them probably going to score at least 20 goals. I mean, Pajot has done it before last year, 14 goals in 54 games. Um, you know, Palmieri, Nelson, Lee, Beauvillier. They could all score 20 goals. So Wallstrom, I mean, Parise, they might fall short like 15. But the point is, yeah, they, they don't have that elite score, but they have a lot of guys in their team that can score at least 20, and that and that's pretty good. Not many teams can say, you know, the top three in their top three lines, you know, seven out of those nine guys are all going to be at least at 20. Um, so they really have all the makings to really get to the cup finals again. It's just a matter of staying healthy and maybe avoiding the Tampa Bay Lightning. Uh, but – I, yeah, I mean, I think this is the year. I mean, they have, yeah, they have, they are an old team, but then again, they have young guys, Wallstrom, Dobson, which we haven't spoke about yet. I think Dobson can really break out this year. Um, but, you know, Sorokin, Barzell, Bovilli, they're all young, but still, this is the year where I think this is really their chance to do it. So uh, we'll see if they can, but I think that's the simple answer. If everything went right, they can win the Stanley Cup. Felk? I would say that they could be – this could be every Ranger fan's worst nightmare if everything breaks right. They win the Cup. To me, if I'm an Islander fan, this feels like the Rangers in 14-15. Yeah. It feels like the pieces are finally getting into place. They have an, they have a, they have a, an answer or a question that needs to be answered, obviously, with Gustafson or whoever else ends up in that other top four spot on defense. But – what what other areas are you really concerned about aside from having not having the top light sniper? I, I don't I don't see anything like Dan Rosen saying. So for, for me, I think if everything goes right and in the playoffs, they get the production that they were getting up and down the lineup and it continues against a team like Tampa, then they go all the way. I'm going to have to gouge out my eyes at the end of the year if all this breaks right because I need to make sure I can't see the Islanders lift that Stanley Cup. It is definitely a possibility. I don't want I don't want to admit it. I don't want to say it, 
but I am also someone that's covering this team now. So I'm also impartial despite what that, all that memorabilia behind me says the Islanders are, are definitely on the short list of teams in the, in the preseason. You could ever say they're going to, they can go to the Stanley cup and lift it. So there you go. But Anthony, what could derail a good season? Well, I gotta, I gotta say, you know, their goaltending is one of their strengths. Um, and again, I know it was stated before, this is obvious for a lot of teams, but if an injury to Ilya Sorokin or Simeon Varlamov happen, um, you know, it could it could be bad. And this is what we'll talk about Varlamov. So Varlamov um, hasn't participated in training camp with the rest of the team. Um, I'm not sure if he's if he's skated on his own. I know Trot's reference, you know, he's working on it. And maybe that means like off ice working out, riding bikes and stuff. Uh, he said it's something he's not concerned about. And it's more so just giving him the time now rather than rush him and then have him have to catch up during the season. He said he'd rather give that to him now. But no injury. All it said is soreness, you know, no lower body, upper body, just soreness. <laughs> I mean, we can assume that it probably has something to do with the, the injury that he had that kept him out of um, starting the series against Pittsburgh. Uh, I guess that's what it is, but we I really don't know other than just soreness. So, But if he was out in an extended period of time, now you're talking Corey Schneider is the backup goalie. And, yeah, Corey Schneider shut out a devil B team, but let's be real. He's not really a an NHL caliber goalie anymore. So <laughs> if Varlamov was out, that means there would be a Sorokin injury away from having Schneider as your goalie, and that would send it off the rails. Um, or even if Sorokin didn't get hurt, you don't want to burn him out. That means they're gonna you're gonna have to use Corey Schneider a little bit more. Um, so yeah, for me, it's easily this. Um, but all signs point to Varlamov, you know, being ready pretty close to the start of the year. Maybe maybe he misses the first three games or so, but. As Trot said, he's not concerned about that because Sorokin's there. So, uh, but long term, yeah, that would derail it. Philk, I'm going to go with what you said before, actually, Mark. An Adam Pellick injury. Adam Pellick is is really the the heart of that defense. And Ryan Paul, we, I know everyone likes him because he's a good two way guy, but Adam Pellick for me is a top three defender in terms of shutdown ability in this league. Uh, I say he's probably number two behind Jacob Slavin. I think that's the only one. Say I Jacob Slavin. Yeah, Jacob Slavin's probably my number one, but Adam Pellick is a very, very close number two. Like the gap between them is probably about that small in terms of defensive play. So um, Adam Pellick, to me, if there's another injury to Adam Pellick and there's a serious injury and he's out for some time or he's out come playoff time, that's a big wrench because now everyone else in that defensive <laughs> corps has to step up and start taking minutes from, from everyone else. Do you really trust Eric Gustafson in the playoffs with more minutes and even strength with Adam Pellick down? I don't. I wouldn't if I'm not on the fan. Do you trust Andy Green to come in after playing, what, 20, 10, 20 games during the regular season then all of a sudden be coming and be effective during the playoffs if he's your seventh defender? I don't know if I do at that point, and I don't know when Andy Green has left in the tank at that point. Do you expect a 44 going on 45-year-old Zdeno Chara to be able to withstand a full regular season and then an increase in minutes if there's an injury to Adam Pellick? I don't know if I do, and I don't know if I would as an Islander fan. So uh, Adam Pellick to me is is the key. I, I think he's even more crucial than if there's a Matt Barzell injury because I think the center depth down the middle can help them if there's a Matt Barzell injury. But if there's an Adam Pellick injury, there's a big problem. Well, you guys have two great answers, also because Anthony took mine and Phil, you echoed mine from before. So, <laughs> pat myself on the back for a second. So now I got to be yeah, different. Yeah, go, go ahead, do it, do, yeah. it, do it, yeah, do it. You know you want to. I, I now just to be different, I have to say, uh, JG Pajot getting injured, that would be it for me. It would, I would, I would be worried about that. Because as much as it, it goes, what we said before with the defenseman, somebody else that has to slot in there. Can Michael Del Cole, who is still on the team, right, Anthony? Yeah, but he's. I would imagine he'll be put on unless he wins that that thirteenth or fourteenth forward spot. He'll probably be waived. Okay, so uh, unless he's there for uh, the to fill in if a Pajot injury happens, I mean, I could see. A couple guys that can maybe go in there, 
but then you're losing in one of your matchup centers. And like we said before, the Islanders win the matchup, uh, the center battle every single night yeah. because they can, they'll go, I'll, I'll move Sezikis against this guy. I'll move Pajot against this guy. I'll move Brock Nelson against this guy. Even when they don't have the last change, they could still yeah. put and, a good and, center up against someone else's good center. And just to so, validate your, just to validate your point there. Uh, if you remember early on in the playoffs, he, he was looking like if the Islanders won it all, he would have been their con Smythe favorite. And yep. then he hurt, and then he hurt his, he played through it. He hurt his hand. And then you saw it in Tampa. He wasn't nearly effective against Tampa as he was earlier in the playoffs. And I mean, look what happened. Yeah. And, and of oh, always, whenever I talk about JG Pajot, I always got to say, screw you for the 20, uh, the 2018 yes. playoffs. I will, or sorry, 2017 playoffs. I'll never forget that four goal game he had against the Rangers. So in any event, um, since we're going to be waiting for folk anyway, Oh no, he's back. Yeah. Good. Uh, doesn't really matter. I was going to you first. Any, anyway, Anthony season prediction. Go ahead. Well, we stated a while ago in our Metro predictions. I, I predict them to win the Metro, and um, you know what? I mean, I, I, this would this would break my heart, and maybe it's also a little bit of a, I'm not wanting to jinx them and saying they're going to win it all. I say they go to the Stanley Cup Finals and they lose to Vegas or or Colorado, and I'm uh, and I'm crushed again for the third year in a row. But um, <laughs> that's uh, that's 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 my that's my prediction. Okay. I'm going to say they win the division. I think they get to the conference finals again and lose again. I, I, I don't, I don't know if, I don't know if they have enough still to beat Tampa. Cause I, I still think Tampa is going to make moves at the deadline. I think they're going to get depth pieces and I'm not saying the Islanders won't, but I, I think Tampa at the end of the day, the goaltending is always going to favor them. And I think the star power is really what wins in the playoffs. And that's part of why the Islanders haven't really gotten over the hump yet because they're deep. They're very deep, but you still need those guys that take it to that very, very next level. And I love what I've seen from Anthony Beauvillier. Uh, As a, as a Ranger fan, I I hate playing against him because he seems to elevate his game every time the, the stakes get higher. But there need to be more guys on that Islanders team that can really do that. And I don't think that they have that number one top end talent that's really capable of doing that as skilled as Matt Barzal is. <laughs> oh, oh, wait, hold on. <laughs> um, and we're going to close out with my prediction. Did you guys lose my audio again? No, 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 no. no. We, oh, we still okay. got it. No. Oh, all right. No, we, we got everything. Oh. Uh, they're going to the Stanley Cup Finals. Uh, I, I, I don't, I don't want it to happen, it, but it's going to happen. So why fight it? Why don't I just predict that they're going to make the Stanley Cup Finals? <laughs> I can see them either losing in the second round this year, like having a setback, or being in the Stanley Cup Finals. I'm going to lean towards the Stanley Cup Finals. Unfortunately, in this scenario, I'm going to say they're going to be second in the division because they're just not as good of a regular season team, say, as Carolina is, if Carolina is able to win the division. But in this scenario, that means they knock out the Rangers. So I, I really don't want that to happen because if you match up my two predictions, that is where it's going. But uh, we're going to want to know what you guys think. How far can the Islanders go? Can they be the team that represents the Eastern conference in the Stanley cup finals, uh, who is irreplaceable on their team. Put it all down in the comments below. If you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your ideas are intriguing to me and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.